The default legends for line charts can be awkward and time consuming to read, especially when you have two series in your chart. In this video, I'm going to show you how to label the end of the line and for that label to dynamically update as your data grows. Now the first trick here is that we have two series for budget and actual, one for the line and one for the label. Likewise, there are the actual columns, line and label. All of these series are in the chart and we're exploiting the fact that charts don't display hash NA errors. Therefore, in columns E and F, we can use an if formula that returns hash NA where the current row isn't the last in the table column that contains a value. We can see for budget it's row 61 and for actuals it's row 52. Now in English, the formula says, if cell C44 is blank and cell 43 is not blank, then this must be the last row with data so return the budget amount, otherwise return the hash and a error. Now at budget that you can see here is a table structured reference that references the budget column on the row containing the formula. Now if we look at column F, you can see the formula is the same. The only difference is it's referencing the actual column. Now all I need to do is add labels in the chart for these series here. So select the chart. Now it's tricky to select these series because we can't see them easily. So I'm going to go up to the format tab and then in the drop down here, I can select the series that I want. Now I'm going to add a data label, but I want to go into more options. And here I want to go to the label options and I want the series name, not the value. And it's defaulted to the label position of right. So you can see our labels there. In order to give the label more room, I'm just going to move the plot area to the left slightly. A nice touch is to also color code the label the same as the line. So let's do that. I'll go into text options and here I'm going to choose the same color as the line, which is this one. Now what you might find is that it appears lighter than the line. That's just because the font is not as thick as the line. So we can go one shade darker just to help its readability. Now all I need to do is repeat that process for the actual. So on the format tab, let's select the series. We're going to add the data label with more options. We want to have the series name. We don't want the value. We don't want leader lines and it's correctly positioned right. Let's go ahead and format the font color so that it is the same as the line and we'll go one shade darker for this one as well. Now, when I enter a new value for my actuals, let's enter 380, you'll see the line and the label moves along. Nice, huh? Now, one of the limitations of this technique is when the lines end in a position that's close together and the labels end up overlapping. Unfortunately, there's not really an easy way to handle this when you have lots of lines. With just two lines like we have here, you could always modify your if function to test whether this value is close to the actual or vice versa. And then you could add a buffer value to that data point, which would automatically move that label above or below where it would have normally finished. Alternatively, you can always move the labels, just left click and drag and manually move them into place. Obviously that's not ideal, but if you've got lots of series and they just happen to end in the same place, that might be your best solution. Hopefully Microsoft will improve the chart labeling experience in future releases. We have been hounding them to do this for quite some time. Now you can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. A big thank you to fellow Excel MVP, John Peltier, who showed me this technique. I hope you can make use of it. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.